I know a girl who is terrified of maps. True story. She knows who she is, too. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. It means bear right. No. Up there. It said right. It said take a right. No, 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 look. It, it means go up to the right, bear right, over the bridge, and hook up with 307. Make a right Maybe it's turn. a shortcut, Dwight. It said go to the right. It can't mean that. There's well, a lake right there. I think it knows where it is going. This is the, the lake. machine knows. This is the lake. Stop yelling at me. No, it's not the lake. Right. There's no lake here. One of the juiciest, most damning stories about Ellen DeGeneres has just come out, and if it wasn't over for her before, it is definitely over for her now. This is a can't-miss story. Pepsi will no longer be the Super Bowl halftime show sponsor. You won't believe who took their place, and based on who took their place, who I think is going to be possibly performing, a collab has just arrived at Anthropology that you need to run, not walk, to get, and this A-list actress took a picture of her loose, aging body, and I am genuinely at a loss for words. Just before you get all pissed off at me, just hang out to the end. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. Throughout the years, Ellen DeGeneres had a few regular kids on her shows. You may remember Sophia Grace and Rosie. And then there was Grace and Chance. In 2010, 12-year-old Grace and Chance sang Lady Gaga's paparazzi in front of his schoolmates and the video went hella viral. After that, Ellen DeGeneres invited him to come on her show and it changed his life forever. So Grayson, first of all, I think it was, uh, it was yesterday uh, I saw your video and, uh, and you were sitting in math class, I believe, right? I was sitting in math class and uh, I got a text from my mom <laughs> and she said, call me S -A -A -S -A -P. So the first thing in my mind is, dang it, what did I do now? <laughs> and so I finally excused myself from class, and I called, and she said, the Ellen producers just called. And so I said, no, they didn't. It was his first ever plane ride going to LA to tape that. And while he and his mom were there, Grayson told Rolling Stone in a new in-depth interview that that's when DeGeneres presented herself as a guardian and a mentor to Grayson and his mother. He said, I remember her pulling my mom aside and saying, you're never going to have to work again a day in your life. To Grayson, he recalls, she'd say, I'm gonna protect you. I'm gonna be here for you. We're going to do this together. Performing the single on Ellen was crazy. It went really well, I had so much fun on there. It was so glad to, for that moment to finally come, and I'm just, whew, good day's work has been done. <laughs> So Grayson and his mom are all in, right? Ellen says she's gonna help skyrocket his career, and she does, to be fair. She gifted him a new piano, $10,000. She signed him to her own mini record label thing under Interscope that she had created called 1111 because she wanted to start making her own little Justin Bieber's. Justin Bieber was the biggest artist at that time, FYI. So she got Grayson some super high profile managers that had worked with people like Lady Gaga and Madonna. She also helped him get a booking agent, brand agent, publicist. And Grayson's mom, Lisa, told Rolling Stone it was a big explosion. You're famous. Shortly after that, he booked a mini international tour, and that's when he claims Ellen became super domineering and controlling. He said, my whole week, my whole month, my whole year could change with one text message from her. That was horrible. There was one time, he says, DeGeneres was sent a video of a scheduled performance for a different network. She didn't like what she saw, he says, and made him and his entire team redo the whole thing. If she had an opinion of any sort, the whole thing changed. It's your breath. It's, I don't know if it's the tea, could be the cigars, could be a, I know you eat a lot of meat. It's just, a, maybe it's a combination of the three, but it's bad, bad breath. The article went on to reveal that on another occasion, Grayson had performed in Cleveland, the third of five consecutive stops opening for Miranda Cosgrove on tour, and DeGeneres, back in LA, had gotten an advanced copy of Justin Bieber's Never Say Never documentary. She wanted Grayson to watch it, but Grayson says he was exhausted from touring and didn't make viewing it a top priority. Baby, baby, baby. Ah! 
But then Ellen called up Grayson's mom. Grayson went on to say, I'll never forget this. I just remember hearing on the other side of the phone just yelling and berate me. What type of mother are you? Do you realize that I went out of my way to get this for you and he can't sit down and watch it? Did you see it? In 2012, he released some other project under Ellen and it completely tanked. So Ellen totally abandoned him. He never heard from her, couldn't get a hold of her himself unless her producers reached out and wanted him to come on the show, which he says would be completely fake. No how are yous or anything, just give me something good for my show and then leave. The whole Rolling Stone interview is really juicy and definitely a good read if you have some extra time on your hands today, but Ellen's complete crash and burn has gotta be one of the worst celebrity falls from grace of all time. Would those really work to keep your manicures per per perfect? <laughs> According to Variety, Apple Music will be taking over Pepsi Spot as the key sponsor in the Super Bowl halftime show. The Super Bowl is February 12th in Glendale, Arizona next year, and I'm kind of excited to see what Apple does with this. You know who the top four artists are on Apple Music? Drake at number one. Yeah, Drake? <laughs> Drake? Post Malone, Billie Eilish, and Taylor Swift. And I have been saying that Taylor would be the perfect person to do the Super Bowl halftime show. She has so many hits, she's mass appeal, family friendly, but she could never do it before because it was sponsored by Pepsi and she has always worked with Diet Coke. So now if Apple Music is sponsoring, they could get her. And even more epic, she will have a new album out, right? She will have a tour coming up next summer. It would be the perfect move for her to promote her tour. So I am crossing my fingers and my butt cheeks for this. A few moments later. Sorry, Saka, you lose. Sorry. This is super random, but I needed to share it with you because I was so excited and also pissed that I just redid my whole apartment so I can't use any of this, but you can. One of my absolute favorite luxury interior design brands who makes the most stunning wallpaper, especially um, eco-friendly paint, home decor, has partnered with Anthropology, And all of this is very Alex approved. So if you love the way I styled my apartment, which I've posted on my Instagram, you will love the House of Hackney for Anthropology line. Fun fact, Vanessa Hudgens has tons of House of Hackney wallpaper and decor in her house. It was all in her Architectural Digest YouTube video. Get out. Obviously, I'm super into darker, moody, intense colors and wallpapers, and Anthro has this and more, plus super pretty dishware, throw pillows, blankets, shower curtains. There's like 215 pieces from the British interior design brand available, so go crazy. You're welcome for the tip. I would take full advantage of this. Leave us! We are decorating! Last story before I jump into answering questions from you for pop quiz is Gwyneth Paltrow showing off her wrinkles in a bikini for her 50th birthday. Loose skin and old balls, gross. <sighs> She posted a bikini photo on Goop and talked about how she was so proud to show off her loose, saggy skin as she turned 50. Now, look at this photo. I zoomed in. I got out a magnifying glass. I held it up to the light. I turned the brightness on my phone all the way up. I do not see any wrinkles or loose skin. She has the body of a 25-year-old. I mean, am I missing something here? This was so laughable to me. I'm sorry, but what the heck, Gwyneth? So unrelatable for so many women. Major face palm moment. Thinking of having a diet of just red wine and avocado. They're both supposed to be anti-aging. All right, y'all, it's time for pop quiz. Lulu from Texas asked, as a fashion icon, what sets the mood on your outfit of the day? First of all, I'm not a fashion icon. Second of all, my mom calls me Lulu. That's her nickname for me. And third of all, how much time I have to get ready, that's what sets my outfit for the day, and that is just the truth. <laughs> Shay from California wrote, please give us your Olipop soda review. Obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. I wish I could say that I was getting paid to post about them and talk about them, but I'm not. I just love this pop so much and I drink at least one a day. I actually think the grape one is the best flavor and then I like the tropical punch and crispy apple and orange squeeze flavors are on my want to try list. I did not like their Dr. Pepper knockoff, Dr. Goodwin. It just tasted like cherry cola to me. But if you want to poop normal, drink this stuff. Oh man. This is gonna make a primo dump later on. 
Katie from Vermont wants to know, what are your thoughts on dating apps and do you have any recommendations for meeting people outside of apps? Everyone says to put yourself out there, but what does that mean in this day and age? Apps just aren't my thing and I feel like they're more geared towards hookup culture rather than finding a long-term partner. I have no issue with dating apps and I think it's super cringe and obnoxious when conservative influencers try to act like they're so above them. Look, it's completely normal. I've used every single one. I've gone on multiple dates since I was 20 through apps. I've had several relationships through apps. You're gonna get what you put out. You can say, what are you on here looking for? And say that you're interested in a relationship in your bio. I have learned that unless you're making insanely brave eye contact in a bar, a guy is very unlikely to approach you because they're all too scared now. Apps are just easier. Otherwise, I think the best way to meet somebody is by being set up by friends, honestly. No, 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 yeah. I turned on that new Jeffrey Dahmer series on Netflix last night. First episode, amazing. I was all in. And then by episode three, I was bored to death. That's when I saw it was a Ryan Murphy show. And you know what? It all made sense. With every single thing Ryan Murphy does, either only the first few seasons of a show are good or only the first few episodes. He never makes a great series start to finish, in my opinion, okay? Glee, American Horror Story, all the same. First few seasons, amazing. Then they go completely downhill. It's a signature move. If you love Ryan Murphy, you're wrong. But if you want to be super scared, just watch episode one of the Dahmer series and you'll get a good idea of what his victims went through. I'm so glad everyone is loving the latest episode of The Spillover with Eric Metaxas. It's all about how Christians and the church especially should handle talking about and getting involved in cultural issues. That's available anywhere you get your podcasts and keep leaving five-star reviews after you listen. Every time we post a new episode of Politics, your heart taps, your thumbs ups. Those are an easy way to support the show. Today, I want to discuss the bizarre things you're scared of, like apples and maps. If you you have something shared in the comments if you know someone who does dm this episode to them and click the save button new politics episode tomorrow at 4 p.m eastern 1 p.m pacific it's pop culture without the propaganda every single day i'm alex clark and this is politics Clearly, Poplitics is best served visually, but you can also listen to Poplitics if you just want the audio. Subscribe to us anywhere you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, iHeart, TuneIn, and more. Also, make sure that if you are listening to the podcast version, you leave us a five-star review. And don't forget, subscribe to Poplitics on YouTube.